Okay, so hi there everyone. We're now in our next video in the Mathematics in the Modern World subject. We're currently here in the Fundamentals of Logic. And we will start this video. This video is actually for the um, operations or logical operators uh, and how to use them in sentence form and how how to um, further, you know, um, the, the values, truth values. Um, but before we go there, let's continue and let's answer this uh, exercise that I've given um, in the last video. So what we're going to do is, is translate the given statements in symbolic form. So we will use small letters PQR. Only PQR, we don't need the S anymore um, as far as this this statement is concerned to represent each component proposition or each uh, atomic proposition here or symbol. So we have this um, statement. If Andy gets up and goes to school, then he is no longer sick. But moreover, if he does not get up, then he is still sick. So we will let P as Andy gets up, Q as Andy goes to school, and R as Andy is sick. So let's have this. So we have an if here. So that's um, telling us that there's a then somewhere. So this is the then here. So let's put that with an right arrow. Andy gets up. So Andy gets up means the P and is the, the cap. Goes to school. Andy goes to school is Q. Okay. Then he is no longer sick. So Andy is sick is R. No longer sick is not R. We may use also the, the tilde. The tilde. But but moreover, but moreover is is going to be a cap also. If he does not get up, get up is P, so not get up is not P. Then so we have an if still again, so we have the arrow here, then he is still sick. So that's R. So let's put them in proper notation. So we have P and Q implies not R and not P implies R. So the next thing that we will do is where to put the proper proper grouping. First, we can see here that if Andy gets up and goes to school, it's a single thought, a single idea. That if Andy gets up and goes to school, then he's no longer sick. So we may put here a parenthesis here so that if this is true, so therefore what happens is that he is no longer sick. But moreover, this part, this moreover part, especially this one here, it signifies that it's a separate or another another um idea or another um sense okay there's meaning there's another sense after this and so meaning this is a single sense or a single idea next is also a single idea another separate idea okay so meaning if andy gets up and goes to school then he is no longer sick telling this the contrary um if he does not get up then he is still sick so that's our answer for this number for the second example here for our exercise so p and q implies not r and not p implies r so again we can still we can also use the tilde so this is actually the the last slide for our fundamental of fundamentals of logic as far as propositions are concerned for the introduction so we will start now with the operations of propositions so we have done already the uh, operations a little bit only that for the translations but what is the propositions again oh, or how can we use it okay so we have again our compound propositions we have shown this in the previous video so we have the types of propositions or compound propositions we have negation conjunction disjunction conditional and biconditional we have the values or the names for it we have the not the and the or the if then and then the if and only if so we have the symbols and then it is read as these Okay, so just take a note of this. Um, if you can, kindly take a screenshot of this, and then so that you'll have a copy. Um, that we will use in the in the next slides. One, two, three, screenshot. Okay, let's move. Now, first, let's talk about negation. We will be talking about all of them. So negation states the exact opposite of a given statement. So the exact opposite. So if it is true, the negation of it will be false. If it is false, the negation of it will be true. For example. We say that E, uh, remember E, E is, uh, is an irrational number. It's um, equivalent to 2.18, um, 1828, okay, and something, something, something. So that's your, that's your um, irrational number. That's a constant, which is our E, okay, our E. Or rather, 2.718. My goodness, I forgot about the 7. Um, either way, let's write it 2.718281828. Okay, 
It's like a pi, which is a an irrational number. So you may you may um, look at my video about talking about the Euler's number. This is Euler's number, by the way. So that's our p, for instance. What is our not p? Not p is telling us the opposite. We may say that um, e does not represent putting the word not uh, and not represent an irrational number, or we can simply say that e um, represents uh, a rational number. Okay, so that's either of this. Okay, anyways, if you're if you're saying that a number is not irrational, therefore it's rational. So this is our not p. We may write it also like this. So more examples about the negations. Um, what is the negation of the following statement? So we have number one for the p, what is not p. Number two, r, what is not r. Q, what is not q. Um, you can pause the video to answer this. Okay, so let's do this. Um, not p. So for the p, we have square root of two is a rational number. So what is not p? Um, not p is square root of two is not a, a rational number, or we can say the square root of two is irrational. Okay, so that's for our only for our statements. And notice that the truth value um becomes the opposite. So we know that square root of two is is not a rational number. It's an irrational number. So therefore, this is false, making its its negation true. That square root of two is irrational, which is true. Square root of two actually is what we call a third. A third. Okay, number th number two r r says that six is an odd number, which is a uh, false. And the opposite of r, which is not r, is 6 is not an odd number. That is, 6 is an even number, which be be becomes true. It's true. Number 3. Um, Q is math is fun. We can say it's true. It's true for me. Okay. For not Q is math is not fun or um, the other opposite of not fun. So this is what we call negation. We we, we get the, the negative side of it, the opposite of it, the complete opposite. And then notice that the truth value also differs. Let's move on to the conjunction or using the end. Um, conjunction states that a statement is true if and only if both P and Q, meaning both statements, are true. So it's only true if both statements are true. So for instance, consider this um, P and Q here. P is it is windy, Q is the waves are high. So if we're going to put uh, write it as P and Q, what will it be in sentence form? So thus it is it is windy and the waves are high, simply enough. Okay, so that's our conjunction. Um, for our disjunction, that's the or. It states up that the statement is true if and only if p is true, or q is true, which is an inclusive or. Okay, so for instance, we have the same p and q. It is windy for p. The waves are higher for q. So what is p or q? So you just put the the logical operator, or the conjunction inside. So it is windy or the waves are high. Okay. So that's for the conjunction. Uh, for the conditional statements, it's also called implications, by the way. So also called implications. So let P and Q be propositions. So we say this or we write this as P, if P, then Q. So there's a hidden word here, which is if. If P, then Q. Or we can say P implies Q. P implies Q. For instance, we're going to make use of the same P and Q values. It is windy and the waves are high. So how do we read this? We read this as, as if P if P, then Q. That is, if it is windy, then the waves are high. Or you can say P implies Q. It is windy, which implies the waves are high. So in a, in a conditional statement, we have here some parts. This P here is what we call our hypothesis. And the Q here is what we call our conclusion. So the hypothesis uh, makes the, um, some, tell them or makes it... Um, gives you a conclusion. So the hypothesis gives you a conclusion. So it depends upon the values, if it is true or not. Okay, but know that we call this the hypothesis. We call this the conclusion. So for instance, so let P and Q be this. Um, what is uh, P implies Q? So it is math is fun, or rather, if math is fun, then math is easy. Or you can say math is fun implies math is easy. So if math is fun, then math is easy. How about this one? Okay, Q implies P, which means if math is easy, then math is fun, clearly enough. Okay, and notice here, as you can see, P and Q, um, P 
the 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 arrow of the conditional of conditional propositions are very much important because p implies q is different from q implies p the moment that they can be interchanged we will combine this this the this these arrows in such a way that it will become something like this okay and this is what we call our biconditional proposition or by the bi the by implications so let p and q be propositions so this is said uh, said to be p if and only if q for instance we let our p and q be the same things so we have p if and only if q so therefore it is windy if and only if the waves are high okay, if and only if the waves are high okay so pretty much that's our compound propositions just a little bit of um review so we have the negation with the word not or with these symbols conjunction and also but moreover we have this symbol disjunction or or either or neither nor and nor with it will be with ha with a uh, the negation so it's going to be either or only so we have this cup conditionals is if and then or implies by conditional if it is if and only if we have the symbolic forms here written and we we, we have here how it is read so um that's it for our operations on propositions okay um next up we will be talking about the forms of conditional propositions so the conditional propositions all actually have four forms um one in which we have discussed now and then the other three will we will discuss in the next video so thank you very much for watching and i hope that you would like and subscribe thank you very much